Okay, so let's see if you know enough about percent and money to solve this simple math problem. Okay, so the question is, 35 cents is 20% of how many dollars? Okay, so we have to be careful here because we are dealing with cents and dollars. Now, feel free to use a calculator, but if you have an answer, go ahead and put that into the comment section. I'll show you the correct solution in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly tell you who I am. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you want a nice, easy-to-understand way to learn math, well, then check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. All right, so here again is our problem. 35 cents is 20% of how many dollars? Okay, so obviously we are dealing with U.S. currency here. And if you're not familiar with U.S. currency, I'm going to do a quick review of some basic concepts, at least enough for us to solve this problem. All right, so let's take a look at the correct answer. The correct answer is $1.75. Okay, now, if you got this right, well, you definitely get a happy face and an A+. Plus. And if you're like, uh, Mr. YouTube Math Man, uh, I don't really know how to do this problem. Well, no big deal. I'm going to explain it right now. Okay, so here it is. 35 cents, of, uh, 35 cents is 20% of how many dollars? So we got a few different things going on here, right? We um, have to understand cents as it relates to dollars. And then, obviously, we have a percent question, Okay. So let's just do a quick review on uh, just uh, U.S. currency here real quick. So in most currencies, you have coins and then you have bills, right? So like a little piece of paper. So this would be bills and then coins are little round things that we, you know, put in our pocket. So in uh, U.S. currency, uh, we have uh, four different types of coins. We have a penny and that penny is worth one cent. Okay, all of these here um, are uh, values less than a dollar bill. I'll get to that in just one second. So a penny is one cent, a dime, okay, is 10 cents, a nickel is five cents, and a quarter is 25 cents. Now, notice the symbol that we're using. We're using the cent, um, uh, the cent a symbol to define cents, okay? Now, a bill, okay, is like a piece of paper. So there's different bills in the U.S. currency. We have a dollar, five dollar bill, ten dollar bill, but one dollar, okay, this is the lowest bill, the lowest, uh, um, you know, currency for a bill, one dollar is worth 100 cents. So if you had 100 pennies, well, that's the same thing as one dollar. If you had four quarters, that's the same thing as one dollar, right? So one dollar is equal to 100 cents. Okay, so keep that in mind as you do this problem. So we're going to have to be thinking about units uh, here, right? So we have uh, cents and dollars. But the question is what? Well, it's uh, 35 cents is 20% of how many dollars? So we're going to have to have our final answer in dollars, right? But uh, before we get into the actual mechanics of this problem, let's just do a quick review of percent. Okay, so let's, let's just make sure you understand percent. Okay, so 4% of 30. Can you solve this basic little problem? Matter of fact, uh, hopefully you have your calculator out. But if you could do this problem, go ahead and put your answer in the comment section. 4% of 30, how do we find the percent of a number? So what we need to do is change that percent to a decimal. So 4%, we're going to write as the decimal 0 0.04. Now, how, uh, like basically... Why do we do that? Okay, or why is 4% equal to the decimal point 0.04? Right, well, let me explain this right now. So 4%, a percent, okay, when you have a number in terms of a percent like this 4%, it's equivalent to a fraction where this number in front of the percent symbol is over 100. So this is equivalent to the fraction four hundredths, okay? Now, if you take four and divide it by 100 in your calculator, you're going to get 0 0.04 or four hundredths, okay? So this is the fraction four hundredths, but the definition of percent is taking that number that is a percent and dividing by 100, okay? So you have four 100, so four divided by 100 is 0 0.04. Now, four percent, you can think of this as 4.0 percent, 
And I know a lot of you out there are like, hey, Ms. Teacher Math Man, don't make this uh, harder than it is. Just move the decimal point over two places to the left. Yes, indeed, I agree with you, but that is the result of dividing by 100. Okay, that's why we move the decimal point over two places to the left. Okay, so 4% of 30, what we're going to do is change that percent to a decimal. Now, we could uh, write that as a fraction, but most of us uh, change that to a decimal, but we've got to get it out of its percent. Okay, so either a decimal or a fraction, and then we're going to multiply that uh, by that number. So 4% of 30 is 0 0.04 times 30, which is 1.2. All right, so that's just a quick refresher on how to find the percent of a number. But let's step it up a notch in terms of... Uh, percent questions and let's take a look at this so four percent of x is 15 now x is a variable in algebra but we can kind of make another question here so four percent of what number okay so x just represents a number so here is a question let's just get rid of that x and insert what number so four percent of what number is 15 all right, now to solve these type of percent questions, it all depends on how you learn this in school, but uh, using algebra is an excellent technique. All right, now if you know how to find the answer of, to this question, 4% of what number is 15, and you don't have to use algebra, that's perfectly fine. But uh, I'm gonna suggest that uh, you, know, you use basic algebraic equations to solve percent problems that are a little bit more involved. Okay, now if we have a number, remember like 4% of 30, if I want to find the percent of that number, what do we do? Well, we change that percent to a decimal. So that's going to be 0 0.04, and then we're going to multiply by that number, right? So 0 0.04 uh, times x, or this mystery number, is, now the word is in math means equal, is or is equal to, so 4% of some number is equal to 15. All right, so we can solve for x here because this, this is a simple algebra equation. 0.04x is equal to 15. So to solve for x, all we have to do is literally divide both sides of the equation by 0.04. Okay, so if you're not familiar with basic algebra, I'll give you some uh, suggestions on how you can learn this. But in your calculator, if we go 15 divided by 0.04, we're going to get the answer 375. Okay, so I showed you two problems there, how to find the percent of a number and how to use that concept to solve a little bit more interesting problems. All right, so this is enough kind of percent skill in order to solve our actual problem, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and get into that right now. But uh, before we do that, let's get into this. And that is a uh, request to help support this YouTube channel. Now, uh, my channel is all about encouraging people to stick with math, especially those people that have some idea in their head that they're bad in math, right? That is not true. If you think to yourself, hey, I'm not so good in uh, math, Mr. YouTube Math Man, or I failed math, uh, you should have seen me in school, Mr. YouTube Math Man. I was, uh, I was like the worst student. Listen, you know, I know a lot of you have had uh, tough times in math. I get it. I've actually had t tough times in math. You know, it's all relative. But here's the deal. You know, if you stick with math, okay, and you, you know, you find teachers that can really teach this stuff in a clear and understandable way and you don't give up, you will find success. So no one out there is bad in math. What you need to do is figure out what you know and don't know. It's kind of like a ladder, okay? And you got to figure out where your skill level is at, all right? If you want to learn algebra, but you don't really know basic math, well, you need to go down here and start and just kind of build up your skills one you know rung at a time all right but a lot of people are like hey i don't have time for that mr youtube math man i gotta get right to algebra well i'm just going to tell you the truth you're going to have a tough time learning algebra if you don't have these foundational skills underneath you all right okay so what i like to do on my channel is really encourage people give people kind of the you know the the truth if you will about learning math right? and pass on decades of experience but I need your help to reach as many people as possible. So please consider hitting that subscribe button. And if you're going to do that, hit that bell notification as well. All right, so we are talking about basic math here, you know, percent and uh, fractions and whatnot. And if you want to review uh, some basic math with me, well, then check out my full main math courses. You can find links to those in the description of this video. And in particular, check out my math foundations or my math skill rebuilder course, right? I cover basic math and much, much more. Also, I have a ton of content on my YouTube channel. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this problem now because I'm going to show you multiple different ways to uh, solve this uh, problem. 
Okay, so 35 cents is 20% of how many dollars? So our answer is going to be in dollars, right? So we need to give our answer in dollars because that's what the question is asking. So I'm going to let x, all right, I'm going to use algebra here, uh, equal this um, amount that we're looking for in dollars. So I'm going to let x equal that amount, okay? So now 20% of this amount is 35 cents. So let's set up an algebraic equation, okay? So 20% 20 20 of this amount, okay, this amount in dollars is equal to 35 cents. So this equation should look pretty similar to the one I just solved. Okay, so 20% of x is equal to 35 or 35 cents. So let's go ahead and solve this equation for x. So 20% uh, of x is equal to 35 cents. Now x here, there's going to be a kind of a twist here because I said I want to solve for x. I'm going to let x equal this amount, okay, or amount in dollars. But really, I'm going to kind of erase this here. It's just the amount of money because when we solve this equation, the, our original amount for x is going to um, be in cents. Then we're going to have to convert it to dollars. But I'm thinking, hey, I got to give the answer in dollars because that's what the question is asking. But I'm going to give you um, different kind of ways to solve this problem. Okay, so back to the uh, question here or the equation. 20% of x is equal to 35. So 20% of this number, okay, how do you find a percent of a number? Turn it into a decimal and multiply. So that's 0.2, 0 0.20 times x is equal to 35. Now we're going to solve this equation uh, for x by dividing both sides of the equation by 0.20, okay? So 35 divided by 0.20 is 175. Okay, so what does this answer represent? Well, 35, this uh, right here, is in what um, units, okay? Is it dollars or cents? This is still cents, okay? So X is in cents, okay? I guess that's what I was kind of uh, alluding to when I was saying we're going to let our variable equal the amount. Okay, now it depends, you know, on how you solve this equation. Uh, your answer could come out in cents, but we need to write this amount, 175 cents, as dollars, okay? So our, this is what our uh, x is equal to in this particular equation. So what's um, 175 uh, cents in dollars? Well, there's multiple different ways to think about this, right? So 175 cents in dollars. So some of you might be saying, hey, Mr. Teacher Math Man, this is easy because you said $1 is equal to 100 cents, and that is true. So if we have 175 cents, and I'm like, you know, I don't want to carry around all these pennies. Here, I'll give you 100 cents. You give me back a dollar, right? So we can get rid of 100 cents here for this one dollar. But if we get rid of 100 cents, we're left with what? 75 cents. So we're going to have one dollar and 75 cents. So that's one kind of way to kind of look at it. I'm going to show you other ways to look at it right now. Okay, so here we have 175 cents. We want to know how many dollars this is. So kind of the more, more kind of techni technically correct way to do this problem is to convert these units of measure, cents to dollars. So to do that, we need what we call a conversion factor, okay? So that just simply means a fraction where we're comparing uh, to um, uh, these units, these different units, but we need to make some sort of equivalent comparison. In other words, $1 is the same as 100 cents. Okay, so if I divide one dollar by 100 cents, that's one. Or 100 cents is the same as one dollar. Okay, so both of these are correct. Okay, but why am I using this one right here, one over 100 and not 100 over one? Okay, well, there's a reason. Because when you multiply fractions, we multiply the respective numerators and denominators, and I want to go from cents to dollars. So let's pay attention here. If you see, this is cents and this is cents, okay? So these cents are going to cross cancel, okay? We're talking about a fraction here and we're left with the unit of measure dollars, right? So here, okay, when we multiply 175 times one, that's 175 in dollars, right? So that's the only units uh, we have left. The cents cross cancel, so one uh, times 100 is 100. So that's why a lot of you are saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, you're making this uh, too complicated. Just take the 175 divided by 100. Well, yes, yes, I know, but I want to make sure we understand why we are doing that, okay? All right, so 175 divided by 100, of course, is going to be $1.75. Okay, so I have one more 
way to show you how to solve this problem. A lot of you are like, hey, hurry up, Mr. YouTube Math Man. I want to watch other YouTube videos. Well, I'm almost done. So another approach you could have uh, taken is, uh, let's just go back to this equation right here, right? 20% of X is equal to 35 cents. Some of you are saying, well, you know, why don't we just get rid of these uh, this cents right here and express these uh, the cents as dollars right off the bat? And you could do that too, okay? So in general, okay, not even in general, when you want to think of um, uh, amounts less than a dollar, okay, like a quarter, so here is 25 cents, this is a quarter. If I want to think of this as a dollar, what you want to do is just write it as a decimal, 0.25, okay, because a quarter, right, or 25 cents is 25 over 100, okay, it's one fourth of a dollar or 0.25 of a dollar. So here, um, 25 cents is 0.25 of a dollar. Okay, so we could write this 35 cents as 0.35, and now when we solve for x, we're we're working in dollars here. So 0.20x is equal to 0.35. We're going to solve the same equation, 0.35 divided by 0.20 to solve for x. So when we go into our calculator, we do that. We're going to end up with 1.75, and again, this is in dollars. Okay, so I covered quite a bit here, but uh, for those of you that are not quite sure how to work with, uh, you know, converting units of measure, this is a really important concept. And for those of you that are not familiar with, you know, basic um, uh, U.S. currency, hopefully this was an interesting video. And uh, most importantly, I think, is just a review of percent, okay, and its association or its connection to money, okay. If there's one math skill that you definitely want to understand, that is percent, okay. Just think about how many times you see the percent symbol every day, right? You're looking at your phone, you're like, oh, I only have 10% uh, left of my uh, battery charge, or you go to the store, or if you're looking on the internet, you have sales, hey, 30% off, or inflation is, uh, you know, this percent, or mortgage rates, or this and that. Listen, this symbol is everywhere, so it's a good idea to understand it. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.